basically the whole Nick Mallet and Ashen Villamsa situation is a situation that's been brewing for many a year. Uh, Ashen Villamsa felt disrespected at being called a, a quota player by Nick Mallet in specific. But he's like, he's like, you guys, when I talk about you guys, I'm talking about now sports as well and Nick Mallets. They played in the apartheid regime. They only played against 10% of the population where Ashton Williams has been playing since everyone got introduced to rugby, whether it's white, blacks, Indians, coloreds, everyone. So he felt disrespected that being caught a quarter player. Basically, if someone calls you a quarter player, it's someone saying you're only there because you're black. You're only there to make up the numbers. You're not there based on your skill and your merits. And this whole debacle isn't just something that started yesterday. It's something that's been that's been around since 2014. Nick Mallet has always been taking jibes at, at Ashton Villamsa, basically under undermining Ashton Villamsa's talents. And it got to a point where the straw broke the camera's back. This comment, he couldn't stand for it. Because basically, while we, while we can't all see videos of the, a racial slur or what truly happened is because everything was said off camera and then it was time to go on and wrap up the game and then he just couldn't stand it he couldn't when i say he i'm talking about Ashro Willemson now he just couldn't handle or stand being being taken lightly anymore see I'm, i think it's important for me because you know i've played this game for a long time mm. like most like all of us here think, you know and um, as a player i was able to put the play for a long time and um, I've earned hard and worked hard to earn my own respect in this game. Mm. So I'm not going to be patronized by two individuals that have played in an apartheid, a segregated year, and come and want to undermine, you know. And so I think, I think for me, I've had, I've had my fair share. I can't work with people and undermine other people. And you know, you can sit, you can laugh about it, but, about but it. you know, it's exactly what happened. It's fine. It's fine. I don't mind being ridiculous. I'm glad it happens on air so people can see. Because you two sit here, no, it's fine. Like, it's everything that's combinated and you just couldn't stand up. In your workplace, if someone goes against you, if someone is always undermining you, there's going to be a certain point where, where you can't take anymore. But where, what I don't like is no one really, besides the people that were there in the Super Sports Studios, really knows what happens. So when I see a clip as a black person, Obviously, I'm gonna feel like, um, yes, this is racism. But what actually happened? What actually transpired? Not everything is is a racism factor. Yes, I, I understand we live in a country where racism is probably at its core since I'm um, the end of a about date. I was about to say apartheid. I've been watching too many Americans since about date. But not everything's racism. And this is where, if you've ever listened to a Cube show, a Cube Radio Online, a sports show. This is where I've always been saying the quarter system is not something that, that should be there. Because I'm not saying uh, Nick Mallet was right in saying Ashton Villamse was there because he's a quarter player. I don't know why Ashton Villamse was picked, whether it's purely talent based or whether it was because he's a quarter player. But if th this whole quarter system was not there, I understand what's been brought in place. But if it wasn't there, like none of these remarks that would have been made and i also get Ash ashron Williams's side of the spectrum as well like these guys were playing rugby when black people weren't allowed to to play rugby so what makes them qualified on saying no i was there based on merits and you are based you play based on a quota system and a system that's designed to to help black people so i don't really i see both sides of the stories but I don't think as us South Africans we, we should really judge. At this time of recording this um, show right now, the facts aren't fully out. Maybe as time progresses, the facts will, will be out of what 100% transpired. Because right now, we just you know hearsay basis. We don't know what really happened, what really transpired. So I think we really have to sit down and just absorb the situation. This was something that was the last straw that broke the camera's back. Um, 
from what I've heard about Ashwin Williams, his character, he's not someone that's going to overreact and just do something at the spare of the moment. He's someone who's very calm. He's someone who, who thinks that rationally. And, but when, over a consistent basis of time, the same thing's been happening to you and there's no change, of course you're going to break down. Of course you're going to get angry. I'm, I'm more surprised at the fact how calm he was. Like he, he wasn't a guy. Fuck yeah, you're a puss. Like if I was, that was me as an angry person, I'd say that. But he handled the whole situation calmly. And I'd have to say yes, this has been building up for the what, probably the last four, four years now. And that was probably the only thing he could do. Like that's probably one of the hardest questions any society could ever be posed um what do you do let's let's make an example if nick mallet was racist like he had racist remarks obviously super sports are gonna fire him as a company they don't want someone who, who's like that to be working for them and then but what happens to nick mallet when he's fired he still has his house he still has his cars i'm sure he's probably gonna get a job somewhere at, at a company that is racist so what's gonna happen to him i don't think there's a single a singular solution for for this racism to be treated in society as a whole i think i think like i was watching trevor Noah the other day and he's like we have to treat racism like it's an alcoholic addiction like when someone in your family is an alcoholic you don't just shun them away. You don't just say you lose your job. You don't just say go away. We don't want you. There's steps that they go through. There's rehab. Maybe if we had something similar, I don't know. This is just me. This is a guy who who grew up after the apartheid ended. So I don't fully understand racism as well. So it's easy for me to speak. But let's try hope people who are who are racist let's try put them in a program where they could possibly get better where maybe we understand where that racism stems from i'm not talking this is not just white people there are black people are racist there are indians coloreds asians hispanics who are racist everyone should go through a program where we find out what's wrong where does this racism stem from? Okay, we know what's wrong, you're racist, that's what's wrong. But let's find out where this racism stems from. Can we treat you? Can we make you better? Let me put you in an environment where your racism won't be tolerated, in an environment where it won't be dealt with, in an environment, let's say it's one racist white guy. Put him in a group of four or five black guys. Let's see if his issues with black people won't be resolved. Let's have those discussions. Because at the present moment, like firing someone, like we've seen over the past three, four years, we've had influential people, ministers, and what, what they have you on Twitter making derogatory remarks, they get fired, and then what happens? It doesn't mean that racism is going to stop. Yes, they don't, they don't have the position they once had, but what makes you think that person is not going to go to a mall or in a public area where a black person is and fire racist shots? So just firing someone is not a solution. Yes, it's a temporary fix, but it's not something that's going to help stem the problem. It's just a, a band-aid of a problem.